In this video, I show you a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use SellerAmp SAS to make more money with Amazon FBA in 2024. So to start out, I want to talk pricing in terms of how much SellerAmp actually costs. We're here on the SellerAmp website. There's two different plan options, getting started as well as getting serious right here. Getting started is what's best for beginners. It Basically, the main feature is that it goes up to 1,000 lookups, aka product scans. Um, per month, you can get a completely free free trial at SellerAmp.com. It's $19.95. Per month, the getting serious plan is unlimited lookups as well as three phone app install installs and five Chrome extension installs. That's about $28 per month. And both of these SellerAmp plans include the mobile app, Chrome extension, and web app. So SellerAmp offers three tools in one. We'd love to have you as a SellerAmp user. You can go to SellerAmp.com and get a free trial of that to check it out. Now let's dive into how to actually use SellerAmp right here. So the main feature most of our users are using is the Chrome extension and the mobile app. The Chrome extension for online arbitrage, which you want to go to the Google Chrome store and look up SellerAmp to get that installed. You can see it'll be um, on your screen right here, as well as the mobile app for retail arbitrage, which you can get in the app store on your phone. You can move your SellerAmp around. You can put it in the middle of the screen. You can put it on the right. I personally like having it on the right over here. Now we can move it around as need be. SellerAmp's goal is to answer three questions for you for every single product. Does it sell? Can you sell it? And is it profitable, right? The main feature right here, we can see in terms of the uh, beginning of seller amp here, we can see the title of the product as well as the ASIN, AKA the ASI and the Amazon standard identification number. This is a unique number assigned to every product on Amazon as well as the UPC. We can see the dimensions of this product. That's not super important though. We can see the description of it. We could open up the Amazon product page right here. We're already on it. And then we could also hit Google and then we could look for this item across the internet. We're gonna talk about doing product research with SellerAmp in a few minutes. I suppose we could open up the SellerAmp web app right here. We're gonna talk about that in a sec here as well. Um, eligibility, this is just terms like ungating. You can connect your Amazon Seller Central account here so you can see your ungating. I have another video on my channel that breaks down how to get ungated if you're ever worried about that. We can see the alerts panel. This is very, very important. Um, we can see this proc screen, so there's no alerts. However, if Amazon has a share of the buy box, um, something will pop up. If an item is, sus is suspected private label, it'll pop up here. It is also important to note though that whenever SellerAmp says private label, it's primarily due to there being low competition on a product. So if you see something that's like a Nike or an Adidas product, but it says pride label, look at the competition. I guarantee it's just because the competition is really low. So those items are still completely fine to sell. IP analysis, there's no uh, known IP complaint issues. We can see standard size, multiple no, variations no right here. The BSR, aka the best sellers rank, this is how quick a product sells. We can see this specific product is a 50,000 sales rank and it's in the top 1% of the category. Anything below like 100, 150,000 uh, sales rank is, is pretty good. The lower the sales rank, the better. We can see this one's 50,000. That's pretty good. We can see the estimated sales per month across this entire listing. I'd recommend um, staying above like 100 sales per month for the most part. Obviously, the more the merrier. Right here, now we get into the prof calculator. We can see here the max cost is 2708 for this item. My minimum ROI I have here in SellerAmp is 30% ROI. Therefore, we can see that directly correlates right there to passing that 30% ROI. This factors in all the shipping, fees, sales tax, uh, product costs, everything that goes into shipping to Amazon, right? Shipping from uh, the supplier and such. This factors in all of that here. I'll show you how to update that in your settings in a few minutes here as well. But the cost price, you can say we can pay like $16.50 for this. We'd make $19 profit and a 40% margin, 160% return on investment. And our break even cost is $29.25 um, right there in terms of that, our, our break even sale price right there would be at 16.5 right there. We can see it nicely correlates. Right there, the offer summary, this isn't wildly important. I do like to get a sense of the other offers on a listing. We'd see this is all FBM seller. So as an FBA seller, we'd be able to get buy box pretty high on this product specifically. We'd see the ranks and prices charts. We can go and see the current 30, 90, 180, and all time data right here in terms of the BSR top percent average, the buy box price, uh, whether or not Amazon's on it and their price, lowest FBA. Lowest FBM, the keep of BSR drops, wouldn't really worry about that. Net buy box price changes, wouldn't really worry about that. Estimated sales, we already sold there. Estimated time to sale, just based on competition. And then when was last checked, you go ahead and uh, refresh this too. The alerts, you can connect your Amazon seller central account to see like ungating and such. Um, we already looked at the alerts panel right there. We can see another nice breakdown. We can see they're all green in here, so that nicely correlates. Right here, the keep a chart. So this is uh, what, how fast and just like the, the trend of a product over time. I'd recommend as a beginner, mainly focusing on the three month data, the 90 day data. 
Right here, we can see the two Keepa charts. The bottom one here is the off count, aka the competition. We can see how that changes over time here, as well as the top one is the buy box price. I would recommend having the Keepa Chrome extension as well. I have a full tutorial of that on my channel, but especially when you're doing all in arbitrage, maybe on a budget, maybe you just want to use seller amp to start, you can do it and see the Keepa chart in here and see how that product has performed over time. Because obviously having the instantaneous data is very important, but you also need to see how a product has performed over time in terms of its buy box price, its sales rank, how fast it's selling, as well as the competition. A lot of people ask me how much competition is too much competition on a product. And it's not really about how many sellers are on something. It's all about the trend. And that we can see this product currently has four other sellers, which is very, very low on Friday, December 22nd. We can see on Friday, December 1st, it had 37 sellers. So no wonder the competition has gone way down. The price has subsequently gone from like 29 all the way up to like 48 right there as well, which is pretty cool. We can see prop calculator we already touched on. Um, we can see specific uh, breakdown here. Uh, if you're ever looking to do FBM, you can toggle on FBM right here and then add in an F estimated FBM shipping cost. If you want a full breakdown on like estimating FBM shipping costs, how FBM works, it's a really integral part of the business. You can go to howtofbm.com. That's howtofbm.com. I have a full breakdown on there. But say this item, for example, we can go to the weight here. Weighs like 0.18 ounces. So this is going to ship for probably four bucks. With FBM here, right there, we can plug that in. Yeah, and we can see at that whatever $48 sale price, we can pay $16.50 for this. We'd make $19 profit. When you sell something, FBA, you don't pay individual shipping costs like you do with FBM, but you do pay FBA fees. When you sell something FBM, you don't pay FBA fees, but you do pay individual shipping. Both of those are based on size and weight, so they typically end up being right around the same thing. We can see it's literally with a 1% difference in terms of the ROI. Rare maximum cost, this breaks down your minimum ROI and minimum profit criteria you put in your settings, which I'll show you guys in a sec here. And then the total fee breakdown, we can see the exact fees in terms of like the referral fee, the FBA fulfillment fee, and then some of this other stuff, Amazon charges right here that aren't relevant on fast selling products. Right here, we can see the profit margin, break even sale price, as well as uh, if you say you wanted to buy like 10 units of this, these would be the numbers you would get at the specific cost. Your cost of goods would be $165. Sales value will be 480, profit will be estimated profit will be not $193.20. Uh, variations, beta, don't really worry about that. Notes and tags, you can add notes on a specific instance like source, Black Friday, 2023, something like that if you're interested. On that, we can also add in different discounts right here and then that updates the prof calculator as well, which is pretty cool. We could add in, take those off and such. Um, as well, the offers, the site can see what other sellers are carrying as well as their stock counts right here their price points, and then the profit at that current buy cost and ROI as well right here. We can see all these other sellers, their review counts. It's really important if you're a beginner, don't really focus on the review counts of other sellers. It's not really an important metric um, right there, but a lot of sellers do trip out on that kind of stuff right here as well. We can see the search again right there. Amazon Sour Sons just say you want to go ahead and list this product, add it to your inventory, check your orders, etc. Look up details. This is me looking at this product over time and just kind of when I've looked at this specifically find it to show you guys in this example today. And then the buy box analysis is actually a new feature. Seller Amp, uh, we added, I think last month right there, which breaks down over the 30, 90, 180. And as long as that Product has been around the buy box price points and overall buy box analysis. So we can go ahead here and see who's winning it at the highest pricing, right? Who's winning it the most often, right? And who's winning it most recent here. And we can see that just in the past like three hours, four different sellers have gotten the buy box at vastly different prices. Like someone got the buy box at 33 here three hours ago. Meanwhile, someone's in the buy box right now at $48.39. So this is really helpful in terms of, especially as a new seller making buying decisions, looking where the buy box is actually going, not just listing at the lowest price, which is really, really important here as well. Another feature that's really helpful in terms of SellerAmp is the Google Sheets integration. This allows you to connect your Google Sheets account on SellerAmp and stay organized really, really easily. So what I mean by this, if we take a look at this product right here, we can see it's over on Nike.com for only $19.97. It's on sale from 35, so we can see it's about 42% off right here. And if we go on Amazon, we can see at $19.97, uh, uh, that leaves about a $1.75 profit, which is only a 5% profit margin and an 8% ROI, which is not fit a criteria. However, it's fairly close in that if this product goes up to $40, right now it's going to be 
about six dollars profit, seventeen percent margin, thirty percent ROI, and that nicely hits the three dollar profit and thirty percent ROI minimum that I like to have right here. So this is an example of a product that's almost good right here. And so what we can do is we want to stay organized because we're already taking all this time to do product research. We might as well maximize this stuff for time, and we can one click export this to an almost good seller amp spreadsheet. And now we have this lead organized to go ahead and take a look at again in the future. So I definitely recommend having like a purchase lead spreadsheet, check in future out of stock, um, back to school Q4, almost good, a replen sheet, right? The main ones are gonna be the almost good and the out of stock ones, because this is what you're gonna run into tons of examples of, especially as a beginner. We're already taking this time to do product research. You might as well be able to maximize this over time. So the Google Sheets integration is really important. And we'd see export this to almost good. And then we'd see it's hanging out over here on this test spreadsheet I have. We're here at 1223 right there. So I'd really recommend getting the Google Sheets um, set up because it's really, really important to stay organized with this stuff too. So that's the basis of the Chrome extension. We can also go ahead and open up the SaaS web app right here. And we can see all this data really nicely laid out, especially when you're like repricing products or looking into wholesale products and you have to buy big quantities. It can be helpful to be able to look at this and see all the data laid out. However, mostly when I'm doing product research for my own seven figure Amazon business, I'm typically taking a look at the Chrome extension right there as well. In terms of your settings on Selleramp, this is on selleramp.com, which is also where you're going to set up your Google Sheets as well. This is the criteria I like to have for beginners, uh, just setting up buying criteria. So you can see when Selleramp turns green and red right here. I like having a minimum or maximum BSR of 1%, minimum profit of $3 per unit, and then a minimum ROI of 30%. You can totally play with these numbers though, as beginner, raise them, lower them, depending on how you value your time, whether you just want to get fast proof content and such. Right here, additional cost is also very important. Um, if you're using a prep certainty, you want to want to have a prep fee involved. Um, MISC fees, if you want to have some sort of like set dollar amount you assign per unit, just in terms like editing in the seller and prof calculator. The MISC fee percent, this is where I like to put sales tax. So in most states, you're going to have sales tax. So you want to add that in. That way, your seller and prof calculator is going to factor in your specific numbers for your specific area. You can find those numbers on Google. Inbound shipping costs, this is a good estimate because um, some people watch these videos and get really, really mad at me for not mentioning shipping costs. Uh, little do they know, I already have affected on my seller and prop calculator right here. Luckily, inbound shipping to Amazon is insanely cheap for my own Amazon store. It's actually closer to 20 cents per pound because I have my numbers really, really nicely dialed in and everything. However, it, I do recommend overestimate that as a beginner, because naturally your numbers are probably going to be closer to this because you don't have, you know, your shipping dialed in, you don't need the exact amount of units you want to buy to perfectly fit a box based on that. But 40 cents per pound is typically a little bit of an overestimate. Um, two, you can see your default values. Well, I'd recommend just copying these, those not too much you need to edit. And then also, if you haven't already, I'd recommend toggling on the buy box analysis right here. If it's not on for you in the settings, this is really helpful in terms of being able to see and analyze where the buy box is actually going, how often and how recent and at what price like we just took a look at right there. So like I like I mentioned, there's the Chrome extension, the web app, like we already talked about. There's also the mobile app for retail arbitrage is pretty much the exact same thing as the Chrome extension to make sure you get that download in case you go to the, like the Nike out or Marshalls as well. Another feature of Selleramp that I use daily is what's called the storefront stalking or reverse sourcing feature. This is where we could scroll down to the offers on Selleramp and we can take a look inside the storefronts of all our sellers to find pre-vetted leads that we want to take a look at. So I like opening up all the FBA sellers, especially FBA sellers that have a lot of reviews here. We can see, so we can see like sellers that have like, and, and even some FBM people too. Um, so we can see like sellers that have like 50 plus reviews, 100 plus reviews, et cetera, um, right here. So we can see examples of other seller storefronts. And now within the seller amp storefront stocking view, we can see their favorite brands that they carry. And we can filter to specific ones to say you wanted to sell like mainly jockey stuff, or obviously as a seller, you'll have lots of different stuff. We can also category filter here as well. And we can see we can filter in like specifically Under Armour products, specifically the Adidas products and such. what I like to do is I like to go to winning products, which luckily you can watch, see on my channel, find tons of examples of winning products. And then I like to look at what those other sellers are selling so I can find pre-vetted items that other sellers are carrying right here. And then what I like to do is I'll take a look here and we can see, okay, this is a 2K rank, so that is pretty good. Right here, so we definitely want to take a look at that. This is a 3K rank, that's pretty good. We definitely want to take a look at that. This is a 17K rank right here, definitely it moves quick. This is 21K rank right here. So it should be incredibly easy to find fast selling products to go out and sell because you can just take a look at any of the products we've seen so far today 
any of the winning products you see in my other videos and storefront stock from there to find additional leads. And then what we want to do is pretty much just, I'd recommend just opening up anything that we can see has a good sales rank. I wouldn't really worry about the max cost of the offers, the buy box price here, as long as the keep it chart doesn't show the price plummeting, right? That's really important. We can also see the top offers and open up other sellers from here. And so we'd see if any of these sellers have like a lot of views, might make sense to go out and take a look at, yeah, like this one has 22,000 right there. And you can find other storefronts to really, really easily look through as well. Or we like see like these products, like seven carrying, 12 carrying, all these make sense to go out and look through. Obviously right here, we'd see like these hoodies, there are 2K rank right here. We can take a look at what these are, uh, what these are going for. Right here, so we can see it's moving for around like 45 bucks. Right here, so we want to find items with a 30% minimum ROI, $3 plus profit per unit. Right here, we can see, like, then you can go ahead and just Google these products and try to take a look and find additional winners um, from here and such right here, just using these storefront stock feature. Let's take a look at, okay, what are other sellers selling? Let me go ahead and find the stuff profitable right here. So let's see, track down a winner right here, 45, 32 right here. Not really seeing anything that works with those right here. We take a look right here at these guys. Let's see. So these are like, yeah, 59 bucks right here. So you want to pay like 30 ish dollars or so um, in terms of that. Let's see. And all the time when you Google products, you're going to find stuff that looks like a winner. For example, right here, like we can see this is $32 right here. And we can see it's actually right there. And it goes for like 64 on Amazon. So we can see you can pay 32, move it at 65, nice and profit rate. That's actually how I originally found this uh, winning product that we started off with um, right there. Let's see, Zippo putties right here. I like using Keepa for this stuff too. I have a full Keepa tutorial um, on my video on my uh, channel as well here. We can filter top to bottom. We can see, okay, Obsidian here is at 99 and size large. We can go ahead and plug this on in on Google. You want to pay like 50 bucks. It's going to show on the max cost right here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so we got a uh, $54 max cost in terms of taking a look at the stuff. Right here, so we can see like, yeah, so we can see $55 right here. Then we can see we got 20 off 100 plus coupon right here. And I happen to know on WSS as well, if we actually scroll down here, right? We can see there's a 10% off email signup coupon as well. So that actually gives us another 10% off that we can see just popped up here. So at a $55 cost here, Right, that alone is close to being profitable, but then we can actually do math within seller up and take off 10% by multiplying by 0.9. So you multiply by uh, one minus whatever the decimal is. So if we want to take off 10%, we multiply by 0.9. Right here, now the sense of being $21 profit and a 44% return on investment after shipping, fees, sales tax, everything like that. Right, so use some of these examples you guys see in this video. Like, take a look at some sellers here. There's infinite examples of other winning products. You can go ahead here and take a look at, okay, what are other sellers selling? So you can find vetted items to take a look at. And then you want to use the Google button here on Seller Amp and go ahead and take a look and try to track this stuff down profitably. And that's how to use all the features that go into Seller Amp. Hope you guys enjoyed the Seller Amp tutorial. If you want to watch a full Keepa guide, go here. And if you want to get ungated in 100 plus brands, stay with no invoice needed, go here. Let me know any questions and I'll see you in the next one.